God's word for our meditation comes from the gospel reading that we just read and also the, the verse that we heard in our verse of the day. Allow me to reread that verse again. When Jesus landed and saw a large crowd, he had compassion on them because they were like a sheep without a shepherd. So he began teaching them many things. This is God's word. One aspect, I think, of the, of the human condition that we cannot escape from, that we cannot get away from, is the fact that we need rest. We become tired, we become weary. That just happens to us as human beings. We cannot run from the fact that we need to take a rest every once in a while. Now, the human body is capable of incredible things. And I'm sure you have memories of days where you were up for very long, especially with kids, and you're exhausted and you push your body to the limit. And we can do that for short amounts of time, but eventually we need rest. We, we can't go without it forever because our bodies will simply shut down until we get the rest that we need. We also are creatures that need different kinds of rest to keep going. Right? The first one, and probably the biggest one, being physical rest. Right? It's said that the average hours of sleep that adults need in order to thrive, to do well, is seven hours of sleep a night. Now, whether you get that or not, and it depends on the age, it depends on what your body is like, but that's what scientists say the average should be. And we also need that little rest during the day. Maybe you're someone who loves to take a nap in the early afternoon. Maybe you need that coffee to keep you going throughout the day. Maybe you need to take a walk to get the blood flowing to keep you up when you're at work. But what about emotional and mental rest? Right? Because without having those, it can be really hard to make it through the day and to function. Right? Maybe you had just a long day at work and your mind is racing and you just want to go home and plop on the couch and not use your brain at all for the rest of the night. You just want to sit down and do nothing. You need that mental break. Or maybe when you're overstimulated because of your kids, you just get away to the bathroom for five minutes just so you can make it through the rest of your day. Or you go hide in the pantry and just enjoy a snack by yourself without having to share with the kids. You need that break for, to make it through the day. So whether it's a physical rest, emotional or mental, we need those things. And a lot of times we, we take that solitude by ourselves, right? We sleep by ourselves or with your spouse, you know? and then you go take that break by yourself, but what about when you spiritually need rest? Where do you go? Where, where do you turn? Where do you go to recharge those spiritual batteries that we all have? Well, in this lesson from Mark, he recalls when the apostles come back after traveling, right? Jesus sent them out to go preach the word, to go show the power of God through miracles, and so now they come back and they're tired. They have to travel on foot. They didn't have cars. And so they're going to the countrysides and to these cities and they're walking and they're sleeping in tents or they're sleeping in the homes of people they've met. And then they come back and they start telling Jesus about their travels. And, and I, for one, would have loved to just sit around the fire and just listen to all their stories. Everything that they did, all the people they got to experience and listen to. I mean, maybe, maybe James and John, the sons of thunder, drove out demons from people who were struggling with them their whole lives and they gave these people their lives back with the thunderous word of God. They gave people peace after living with demon possession or maybe Philip and Bartholomew healed the spine of a man who was paralyzed after he fell off his roof trying to fix it and it was so amazing. He gave that man his life back. He could provide for his family or maybe for once in his life Simon Peter was astonished so much that he couldn't even speak, right? He was at a loss for words as he saw people come to faith in Jesus as their savior from sin. I mean, your mind can run wild with stories that you can think of that they told Jesus. And while they had all these different encounters with people, the message they brought was the same, right? Repent and believe in Jesus as your savior from sin. Believe that good news. But after they came back, they needed rest. Because we as people need rest at the end of the day when we are tired, when we are exhausted. The same goes for those who preach the gospel. That's a full-time job. It's a difficult thing. It leads people to become weary. 
And so Jesus told his disciples, come with me by yourselves to a quiet place and get some rest. Right? And notice how the disciples, the twelve, are now called apostles in Mark's gospel. Right? Mark wrote down the titles they had. They were disciples, but when Jesus sent them out, he now calls them apostles. Because they are doing the work of an evangelist. They are going and spreading the news of Jesus. And so now that they are apostles, now that they have the power to do miracles that God has given them, the ministry's busy. Everyone's coming around to see Jesus, to see the apostles. They're bringing their sick, they're bringing their injured so that they can be healed. And it was so busy, the ministry was so busy that they didn't even have time to eat. <laughs> People were just coming in droves waiting to hear what Jesus had to say. And so Jesus said, it's okay to take a break. Let's go get on the boat where no one else can find us. Let's just go take some rest for a while, and then we can get back to ministry. Because ministry is busy, but rest is just as important. And Jesus knew the apostles needed that rest, both physically and spiritually. They needed their batteries charged, too. So they got on a boat, and they thought, we'll sail away. No one will be able to find us. Or so they thought. Because the Sea of Galilee is not a huge sea, right? It's more of like a lake. And they saw where Jesus and the disciples were headed. The cities around the Sea of Galilee were not many, so they knew. We go there, that's where Jesus is going to go. So they all came around and they found Jesus and the apostles again. And so Jesus sees this large crowd standing in front of him on the shoreline, just waiting to hear what he had to say. They wanted to see more miracles. They wanted to hear what Jesus was going to do, how he was going to bring the kingdom of God to this world. Maybe some looked for the truth. Maybe some just wanted to see a miracle. But regardless of their motive, Jesus looked, and when he landed, he saw this large crowd, and he had compassion on them because they were like a sheep without a shepherd. Jesus saw these poor people and literally in the Greek, his insides churned for them. Right? You, you ever felt that feeling before when you have compassion on someone? Right? You see someone who's just in the pit of despair. They, they are suffering. They are struggling. And you physically hurt when you see them because you feel so bad for them because you love them and you care about them. Your empathy is literally exploding out of your body for them. That's how Jesus felt for these people. They were spiritually exhausted. They were spiritually lost. The spiritual leaders of the time were not taking care of the sheep. It was like the people at the time of Isaiah. The shepherds were not doing their job. Instead, these spiritual leaders were piling more and more rules and laws and regulations on the people to the point of exhaustion. It was burdening them. The people didn't know what to do. They didn't know where to go. They'd go to the synagogue and they'd feel worse about themselves. It wasn't getting better. But then they saw this Jesus guy. And the followers of Jesus seemed to be happy. They seemed to be content. They seemed to be well rested. Why don't we go see what Jesus has to say? And so Jesus began to teach them many things. And Jesus gave them that spiritual rest that they need. And right after this lesson, we see that Jesus gave the crowd of a few thousands the physical rest that they need as he fed them in a miraculous way. And so we see our Savior showing compassion not only for their physical needs, but especially their spiritual needs. And so the exhausted apostles and the compassionate Jesus seem to never get a break from evangelizing. The work was always going, going, going. They always had stuff to do, people to see, miracles to do. Do you feel like that sometimes? Not necessarily with ministry-related opportunities in the church, but just in general. And how full is your calendar? Right? How many things do you have going on during the week? Right? Maybe you expect in the summer, things are going to lighten up. My schedule is going to be a little less busy. And it isn't. It's never like that. It's always just as busy as it is during the year. And, and maybe you want to take a vacation, but maybe there's that little part of you that thinks, I don't deserve a vacation because there's always more things that I need to accomplish. and I can, do, I can just push through. I don't need that rest. I'll be fine. And physically, it can be hard to push that pause button and take a break because there's always more stuff to do. Always. Always something to put on the calendar. But what about spiritually? Is that rest always a priority? 
And if I may be so bold as to say the most important rest we need is our spiritual rest. Because throughout the week, you live your life as God expects you to, or at least you try to the best of your ability. And maybe you tell someone about what you believe. You fulfill the Great Commission. And as the week progresses, your spiritual battery is just draining because we are constantly being bombarded in our spiritual lives. Right? Because good things in our spiritual lives can happen, but we know all too often how many bad things can happen. And the world, and the sin without, and the sin within, it takes a toll on us. And our sinful nature is constantly taking jabs at our new man, breaking it down, making it weak. And we get tested every day, and the tests just keep coming, and we're exhausted. And then you look at the news, and you hear the horrible things happening in our world, and that little voice inside you just says, God, what is going on? I need some rest. I need to take a break from what's going on in the world. And just like the apostles coming back from their journey, just like the people standing on the shoreline clamoring for Jesus to show up, we need to go to the one who has compassion on our every need, especially our spiritual needs. We have a weary soul. We need rest. And Jesus knows it. Right? He can see in our hearts. But do you ever feel guilty coming to church? And, and I don't mean guilty because of your sin, because I hope that when you come to church, you hear that my sins are forgiven and that takes a burden off of you. But I mean the sense that you have to put a lot of things on your list on the back burner to come to church. Things that are important. <coughs> Right? Because you know you have stuff to do at home. You know the list of errands you have to run right after church. And, and you come in here and you sit down, you pay attention, but there's always that little thought in the back of your mind going, okay, after church, I need to go do this and this and this. And then I need to go pick up this from the store and I need to do this this evening to get everything done. And We all know the well-known story of Mary and Martha. Right? How one chose to sit at the feet of Jesus while the other is running around in the kitchen frantically thinking, we need to get this stuff done. This is important. But what did Jesus say in that moment? What was most needful? It was receiving that spiritual rest from him. And so Jesus began to teach the thousands of people in our lesson and the apostles many things because it was rewarding for him. That was rest for him. Preaching the word of God, telling people of sins forgiven, and how they are saved from everything that burdens them in life. And we need that rest too. We need that spiritual rest because we know that there are people in this world, like the people in this lesson, there, there are sheep without a shepherd. And, and those people are wandering around aimlessly. They're, they're looking for the next and best religious experience. And when they find one, they think it's so great. It's got the bells and whistles. And then they get bored of it and they try to find the next one and they're lost. They don't know where to go. They find the, a preacher who tells them exactly what they want to hear instead of the preacher who tells them what God wants them to hear. And they're lost. They're not being taken care of. And we are all battered and drained by this sinful world. We are wearied and we're being pulled in a thousand different directions by life, by family, by friends. We need physical rest. We, we can't run away from that. We need that every day. But we also, and more importantly, need that spiritual rest from our compassionate Savior. We need that every day. Because Jesus sees us on this earth, weary from the things of this world, and he is moved. His insides churn for us with compassion because of how we are. Jesus was so moved for us that he died on the cross to pay for all of our sins, to take that spiritual burden from us so we never have to worry, am I doing enough? Am I praying hard enough? Am I doing enough to pay for my sins? No, Jesus said, I've taken care of all of that. You don't have to worry about a thing. Just come to me and be reminded of what I have done for you. And that gives us the spiritual rest we need. Jesus is the only one that has that rest we need because he has a compassionate heart and he did everything for us. And he feeds us with that assurance, with that peace, and with that security that only our loving shepherd can give. Amen. Please stand. <laughs>